Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 302 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we have the full crew here this week, kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. What's up this fine Monday, Richard? Hey Seth, I'm doing well. Finally got through Commander Legends preview season in One Piece. We made it. It was a busy and exciting spoiler season. Now I think we're kind of on like spoiler break for a minute. I, unless there's something we don't know about, I don't think we have any spoilers until like the beginning of the year. So a little holiday season break and then it'll be Caltine time. But yeah, we still have Commander Legend stuff to talk about today. That's on our list. But before we get into that, we have another co-host in Krim. How are you today, Grim? Morning, Seth. Yep, much like you uh, mentioned there, now we are all the way through Commander Legends. We actually get to kind of sit down and process all the, uh, the sets that have come out this year and all the things with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it has been a busy year in Magic, and uh, I'm sure next year will be a busy year too, but we have a lot to talk about today. The plan for today is we're going to kind of wrap up Commander Legends. We have a few more cards we wanted to talk about that came out later in the week. We wanted to share some thoughts on kind of the set as a whole, kind of the meta perspective of the set. Hopefully touch on standard a little bit too. We kind of have a new top deck in the format. So a little bit of standard and then answering your fish mail. So that's the overview for this week's cast. But before we get into that, we have a sponsor. And our episode today is sponsored by Spikes Academy. And do you want to learn the strategies and techniques of the best Magic the Gathering players in the world? Well, then visit SpikesAcademy.com to learn from championship winners how to play Magic at a competitive level. Spikes Academy also offers one-on-one coaching sessions where you can work with a world-class player on building decks, sideboarding, and whatever else you wish. Level up your Magic the Gathering game by visiting SpikesAcademy.com and using the code GOLDFISH at checkout to get 10% off any course of your choosing. So thank you so much to Spikes Academy for supporting the show today. And let's talk some more new Magic cards. Richard, we got a kind of short list of individual Commander Legend cards we want to talk about. And then we'll get to the set as a whole. Why don't you guide us through some more sweet Commander Legend spoilers? All right. Let's start off with the token big white angel of the set. Acroma is back. Acroma Vision of Ixidor. 5 white white, 7 CMC, 6 6 legendary creature, angel, it's a mythic, flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, at the beginning of each combat, until end of turn, each other creature you control gets plus 1 plus 1 if it has flying, plus 1 plus 1 if it has first strike, and so on, for double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, protection, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and Partner. And Acroma has Partner. <laughs> I I actually really I actually really like Acroma. I think Acroma I think it's pretty powerful for one thing. Like it doesn't seem that hard to turn it into a mass way to pump your creatures. And I think my favorite part is kind of how it combos with Acroma's memorial. Since you have like five of those, I believe, mechanics on Acroma's memorial, you get like pro black, pro red, flying, haste, first strike. I might even be missing one. So if you have Acroma and Acroma's memorial, like all your team is just like getting plus five, plus five, and it's ridiculously unbeatable because you have all these protections and trample and everything. So I think it's a cool like flavor callback. And I think it's just like a pretty decent card, even just in like Angel Tribal or something. You don't need that many mechanics or keywords for this to be good. Like, angels have what, flying first strike. Some of them have lifelink. Yeah. This just, like, giving all of your stuff, you know, plus two, plus two, plus three, plus three, and then also having, like, the sweet combo potential with a Chromas Memorial. I think it's actually a pretty, like, legitimate card. Like, I'm scared of this card coming down and just, like, one-shotting me by making the entire team ridiculously big and hard to deal with. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, like, th- this, it's also interesting to see what, like, what pairs are going to come with this? Uh, like one of them obviously could be Rog Rock or whatever. The little, yeah. <laughs> the little free. Uh, ah, yes. Your, your curve is complete at uh, one and yeah, seven. Zero. Well, zero, oh, zero and seven, sorry, by seven. the way. <laughs> I, I mean, it does make it a zero man, zero man of four or five, which that's like a legit card. If that was a real card, it would be like the best card in, in modern, I think. We're we're pretty close to that. That's probably coming in Wait, Cal he, does, time he doesn't have zero. partner, does he? It does, he does. have partner. It does yeah. have partner. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, I see this. 
But I think yeah. if you're playing a zero CMC commander, you might not want to pair it with a seven. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the zero drop sits in the hangar, right? Waiting for the set. Because you could do it all in one turn. Waiting to become a turn seven, zero mana, like three, three. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you tried. Now you're you thinking, tried Richard. Really hard. Now, <laughs> now you're thinking, Richard. <laughs> I think it's also kind of cute with Kamal because Kamal gives uh, for two mana you internal land into a 1-1 one, one with Vigilance, Indestructible and Haste. So you get three of those mechanics plus Kamal's a partner so it get pumped and then Kamal overruns on your beginning of combat step. So if you have Kamal and Akroma, your team's going to be like incredibly frightening. I guess the downside there is you have two really expensive commanders that's kind of the opposite of the Rogic problem like you have a 7 and an 8 so you're not going to be doing anything with your commanders until the late game but if you ever get them both on the battlefield you're gonna have like some pretty insane turns all right i feel you guys have turned into me and are overrating <laughs> this this is like the fairest of fair cards and i'm gonna say it's actually really bad like imagine if you had an overrun in your hand and imagine if everyone could see it right the minute you have like two <laughs> creatures on the board everyone will murder you right so <laughs> The fact that, yes, it can be a big pump, but it's just sitting there in your command zone. Everyone sees it. Uh, you'll never cast this thing alive. And then even if you try to cast it, it's seven mana. That's a lot. I expect to kind of win the game on seven mana, not just like, you know, give my team plus three plus three. Uh, but where I do see this is in uh, kind of like keyword soup decks. And I'm bringing this the next time we play Slivers. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. I, I see this card, <laughs> and it just screams slivers to me. We need a 5C sliver partner commander. That's what we need, Watsy. And then we just dump this thing down, uh, and then it'll be hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's some cool, like, combo potential. But as a fair card, this is a... It is not a combat trick if your opponents see it coming a mile away. But what can they do about it? Kill right? you, eventually, counter eventually, it, <laughs> mana no, drain no, it. No, no. <laughs> it's fine. It's Wrath fine. The board. It's a seven-mana seven commander, right? That's that's how you'll play to it, right? You're like, ah, oh, it's fine. This isn't going to get casted for like most of the game, but. There are, but with like, there are actually some ways to kind of cheat out your commander this set, right? I mean, we have the super sweet new dragon, so who knows? Oh, we, I don't think we added that dragon on the list. Did we even talk about Hellkite Corsair? We should talk about Hellkite Corsair, because right, that is one of the most interesting cards. Segue in into Hellkite Corsair. Four red red, six five, creature dragon, it's a mythic. Uh, flying, when it enters the battlefield, you may put a commander you own from the command zone onto the battlefield. It gains haste, return it to the command zone at the beginning of the next end step. Oh, yeah. What that you, card what is you, sick. Uh, what do you guys think about this card? This is a card for me, like, I think it's powerful, and I think it's, like, has potential to be really strong in certain decks, like Erdragon, where this seems like one yeah. of the best cards you can play with Erdragon. I have a little dislike of cards that refer to commander stuff in specific like how do you feel about the mechanic it's a commander of it? like, set Seth. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, if, if we... this was in standard you'd be like huh but it's a commander <laughs> set Seth. what do you want <laughs> oh, but but do we want do we want these kind of like built for commander cards like I, this one doesn't yes. worry me like jeweled lotus uh as far as power level but do we want things that refer to command zones and do things with things in the command zone? Or do we want commander to just be normal magic where you, you know, you have a lot of cards in your deck and they're singleton I, and you have this random legend. That I, you I feel cast. we are way past the point of normal commander. Like <laughs> there, there are things that reference the command zone, but like every, like if you look at a commander deck nowadays, like most of the cards scale with number of players, like each opponent, uh, they count number of players like your lands, they deal at the command zone, they reduce command, uh, commander tax, things like that. So I feel we're like way past that. So I don't feel this is particularly egregious or anything. It's it's a fine card. It's not particularly broken. And it's a commander set. It, it, it references the things. As long as we don't have broken things, like uh, things that reference absolute values of life, like uh, if you have 25 life, you win the game. Uh, like auto win cards and commanders as long as they avoid those things which they are doing nowadays uh, i think you know actually planning for commander is uh, pretty good yeah I, I i think this card is is 
perfect. I mean, referencing commander stuff, like, I mean, I don't mind most of them, to be honest with you. Uh, like, I, I, I don't view them as a, a big problem, but... Uh, yeah, like cards like Hellkite Chorus from this set are just look really, really fun, right? And this card is very, very, like, you know, Timmy for me. And uh, I also love dragons. Oh, yep, even my dog loves dragons. So, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, like, I, I like Hellkite Chorus, right? I think it's such a fun card. It, it is it is such a sweet, it's a, a sweet way to cheat out some commanders like Nico Bolas, Connect, Make him like you know act have his uh connectability or like you said Ur Dragon and it's just there's a lot here that can be done with this for uh, at least fun stuff for me uh, in my opinion uh, I, I do I, I like it it's it's also a sweet dragon I mean I just really like the artwork too there's like this little what I you can assume to be a commander jumping on the back of this dragon so <laughs> imagine that artwork where like Nico Bolas is jumping on the back of another dragon and it's just like. <laughs> Piggyback ride, we. <laughs> how how auto included do you think this is? Like, obviously, if you're playing, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten mana commanders, it's really good because you're getting that discount. Good with like attack trigger or ETB commanders. That's where like Ur Dragon or uh, Nico Bolas come in. But do you think like do you just play this in any deck, assuming that? In the late game, your commander is going to probably have, like, a big tax on it, and getting it for one turn is worth it, even if your commander isn't one of those commanders that's, like, obviously really strong with it? Or do you think it's only for, like, those Nicole Bolas or Ur-Dragon-style decks? Uh, I, I think it's great if you have, like, yeah, like, like a, a commander that has an ETB effect or can connect or whatever, or, like, example, like, Obika can end the turn, so then this way you just get to keep Obika on the board, right? So... Uh, I, I think there's applications for this dragon in, in a good amount of decks, but I don't think it's something that I'd put in every deck. So far, actually, that's been pretty good with this set. I don't feel like there's a, something that I, I, I see in every single deck. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't think it goes in every deck, so but it is good. Auto-include in Rogar. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I agree with Krim, though. Like, I... This is a fine card, but I feel it's like some kind of combo piece. Like your your commander needs to have either a strong ETB or does something crazy when it connects. I don't think you just slam this in any deck. It's still a six mana six five, uh, just like a dragon without haste. So there is a big cost to it. So you know you actually need to accomplish something. So like big scary commanders uh, fit the bill, but I don't think you just slot this in with any deck. You can surprise Blim, comedic genius. <laughs> <laughs> Punch him and then Surprise, give him Surprise, it's Norrin the Wary. Ha. Huh. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> uh, all right. Next up, we have uh, the other Acroma card. Acroma's Will. Three and a white. It's an instant. It's a rare. Choose one if you control your commander. As you cast this spell, you may choose both. Part one, creatures you control gain flying, vigilance, and double strike until end of turn. Part two, Creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors until end of turn. That last part, that second part, is sweet. I, that that's mostly why I would play it. Uh, I've I've I, I think this card is just all overall pretty solid, um, and just another like another card for tribal decks that at least run white, like my humans deck, to just have a little more resilience and ways to like survive. Uh, you know, constant board wipes. Of course, it doesn't survive something like a Toxic Deluge, but like Wrath of Gods and stuff like that, it, that that's something I like. Also, I just really like the will cycle. Um, I like the idea that, you know, you can get both modes if you have your commander. So I think this card's really good. Like, I think this, as far as just, like, level of play, I would not be surprised if this is one of the most played cards from the set. It's hard for me to envision it really ever being bad in a white-based creature deck because, like, the first mode, you get essentially, like, flying crane technique. <laughs> not yep. a card that anyone really remembers, <laughs> but you get a two-mana di and two-color disc out. It's like mono-white flying crane technique. So it's actually a pretty good way to close out the game like just building a board giving your team flying and double strike 
that can maybe let you one shot someone. The second mode is, as Crib mentioned, really good on defense, where between indestructible protection, you survive board wipes and you get that life gain to maybe like buff your life total. So I feel like the fact that it's good on offense and on defense and other similar cards like Unbreakable Formation, it's what mm-hmm. one less mana and you don't get that flexibility. And that's kind of a staple that a ton of decks play. I feel like you just play this in almost any white deck. It also is hilarious with a chroma because of if you have a chroma, you get both modes and it has like, I don't even know, a million mechanics on there. So your yeah. entire team will also get like plus seven, plus seven or something absurd and pro all colors. So if you have a board and a chroma and you cast this, you pretty much just like win the game. I think you At win least- the game every time you cast this, <laughs> regardless of a chroma or not. It's, it's, it, it is basically Teferi, Teferi's protection, like, you know, a slightly worse version, but like a different version. But you will slot this in every deck that has creatures. Uh, it is like a finisher. It is an overrun effect. It prevents a board wipe. Uh, it is really, really good. I, I would still say Teferi's protection is better because phasing out is really, really good. And you also phase yourself out. But this protects any creatures. Like right. So if you are playing white and you have creatures... This is auto include. So I actually think this is the most auto include card uh, for for decks that can run it uh, in this set. Uh, uh, yeah, like creature decks, I would say like humans and whatnot, right? Like stuff like that, or maybe like hate bears or something. But I mean, there there isn't actually a pump effect on here. So it's, I, it's called double it, strike, Krim. <laughs> that, that is a pump effect. Uh, <laughs> a b- double strike on a bunch of two twos. It will still I mean, kill like, uh, you when they have flying and you gain like 40 uh, life off the back no. and protection from all colors. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it is enough to murder anyone. Usually, like, if you have one creature, yeah, this, this is terrible, right? But, uh, you know, if you have multiple creatures on the board, they're getting double strike. They get protection from everything. They have flying. Uh, it's going to be a menace to deal with. They don't have menace, though. <laughs> Yeah, they don't. They don't have menace, but but like, like, I, I I agree. I, I think this card is like re- really good, but I, I mean I don't know if it's Teferi's anywhere near Teferi's. That's, I think I think it's the fairies protection. I think if you start with the white deck and you you intend to play creatures, you would start with Teferi's protection. You would follow it up right. with a smothering tithe, and then a Chroma's will would probably sit there somewhere. Like it, it's got to be one of those things that you start all decks with, and then. Afterwards, you you remove it if it makes no sense, right? Uh, but I think you start with this card. This it's, this card is surprisingly cheap. I, I think people are sleeping on it. We'll we'll see how it goes. I, I like this this card and like a card we talked about last week are are pretty. I think are a little too cheap for what they are. Uh, and that other card is wrong turn. So yeah, there's definitely some sleepers in this. Set. <laughs> I, I, I I'm not even kidding you. I'm not kidding you. It's a dollar. It's a dollar. It's a dollar. <laughs> Out of the 150 rares and mythics of this set that you could have named, Wrong Turn was probably like the 149th or something on my list what? of cards that you were going to name. Like, I like Wrong Turn, but if, I don't know. Are people going to play it? Like, I think uh, if you're in the, like, crim troll camp where you just want to mess with people, I think it's a staple. <laughs> but do you play it in, like decks that are trying to win and not just troll people you you play it in blue right yes like it's so, it's, you just play it in blue like i, I think a, any deck that driving. plays like a turn to frog or something like that would seriously consider this and i, I would put this i would auto include this uh, I, I would disagree with crim though like people don't pay that much for removal <laughs> right so like if, if you were to play wrong turn you could sub it with like a turn to frog or something and like you're kind of okay with it uh, but it's not the same. It's not the it, same as turn. To I, I agree. I it's think it's so better. But better. again, it's just like weird removal, right? Like it's not. It's not but a. It's, it's not a cyclonic a, rift. <laughs> no, it? but it is so much fun, right? Like, and and I, I think that the the like the 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 play that it'll bring it to the game is just hilarious and worth. I, I don't know for a dollar. I feel like this is just. You know, like, I, I think it should be somewhere near, like, what, like, five bucks or something like that. Six eh, bucks. Man, this Mana card is sweet. Mana grip. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Blue Vampiric Tutor, I, I think is what I hear you saying. <laughs> yep. Yep. I will I will take. I agree. It is the Blue Vampiric Tutor. I mean, you're going to use the Vampiric Tutor to tutor the wrong turn anyway, so you might as well just yeah, yeah. have it. Just, just wait. Just wait. You're going to get blown out by this, and, and mark my words, it'll go up by a few dollars. <laughs> 
All right, next up we have Hull Breacher. Two in the blue. It's a Merfolk Pirate at rare. It's a 3-2. Flash, if an opponent would draw a card, except the first one they draw, in each of their draw steps, instead you create a treasure token. Okay, this this card is actually like... <laughs> what is Whatever it is right now, I already feel like the price is too cheap on it. it I it's love like $17. Card. It's pretty expensive. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is. Okay, even better. People are like all over denying card draw. <laughs> This card is sweet, though. Like, this is exactly the kind of card I love, right? Like, Troll <laughs> Tribal, obviously, it's good. It's annoying. It's disruptive. It has flash. <laughs> and it, most importantly, it gives you stuff when people love drawing cards. Do we really need more Notion Thieves in the Commander <laughs> format? Like, Wizards, yes. come on now. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this, I feel like this is probably just better than notion thief it's cheaper what? it's uh, not it's not it's you not don't get to Demir. draw the cards right it's not in the yeah. so you get to play it in like a ton more decks than you can play notion thief you're like blue white deck or mono blue deck or simic deck all of a sudden has a no, notion not- thief style effect Oh, we're talking about Hall Breacher, not Wrong yeah. Turn. Yeah, okay, okay. Hall Breacher, uh, Hall not, Breacher. Not Wrong Turn. Okay, gotcha. No, I gotcha. mean, I guess technically all those decks <laughs> could also play Wrong Turn, but I feel like Hall Breacher is insane. Like, it's do good. you just play this good. in any blue deck? Like, is this also a staple? Like, you shut down card <laughs> draw. Sure, you don't get to draw cards, but you're going to get mana off of it, which is never bad. Like, Smothering Tide style, you know, mana production is always good. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, I feel this like, is just like I woke like up on staple. the opposite side of the bed of Seth today. I've disagreed like a hundred percent with everything he said today. <laughs> I think this is a huge trap card. I think this card is terrible. You don't want to play it. Like, you, oh. <laughs> so if you if you play it, you will immediately agitate whoever you played it against, right? And That's true. You need the cards that Notion Thief gives you to do something. Like just making a bunch of treasure tokens is not enough and once it's on the battlefield no one's going to draw more cards so like it's not going to do anything so i feel like all this does is just gets you killed without any actual advantage it's like playing a narset right like narset's immediately dying like you better do something good with narset because you're denying everyone their card draw but you just made like two treasure tokens three treasure like i don't know what you did right and what are you gonna do with them like kind of nothing so i i feel like it's just going to get you killed without giving you any benefit. At least with Notion Thief, uh, you know, you draw a couple cards and then you're like, okay, you know, now I can deal with you guys. You can kill the Notion Thief. This one, you get a treasure token, they kill it. You're like, I spent a card for a treasure token. Was that worth? <laughs> right? So I, I feel it's a little bit of a trap. I feel it looks scary, but I'd rather just play Narset, I think, if I wanted to hose people and annoy them. But I mean, I think of this more as just a redundant, like to have a little more redundancy in the deck, right? Like, okay, sure, you have narset but you know you're not going to see it every game so just having a second copy yeah. a second way to shut out shut down the whole table's draw like, is, like all, is all this does both. is enable the wheel decks right so if you haul breach your wheel yeah it's gg uh right but right, but if, right, you, if you try sure. to play this in well, some fair manner yeah, i don't think it's any good but notion thief you could play fairly Wait, wait, I actually could see you going wheel with Hall Breacher and not really win the game. Because you, cause you, if you don't get to draw any new cards, you have a ton of mana. There's points in the game where you're going to just wheel and have like 32,000 mana. It's like, all right, and a 3-2. Well, well you, you get a new hand and then you just made like 30 mana. And then everyone else uh, yeah. has no cards. So I think you're pretty good. <laughs> I think yeah, you're pretty good. You still win. Uh, it, it, I, I, it's I, probably better than is, Notion Thief in this case, right? Because Notion Thief, like you draw all these cards and then you're out of mana, you can't do anything. But this one, you have a new hand and like, you know, 20 mana to work with. <laughs> I, I I mean, sure. <laughs> but like, I, I feel like of the ways to like dunk on people after you wheel, this is... A little more on the weaker side, actually. <laughs> I mean, if you wheel and you're the only one gets that gets cards and everyone I mean, else yeah. loses their hand, that's like, just the wheel, it doesn't, right? I, I feel like that is strong enough regardless of what bonus you get. <laughs> oh, don't don't get me wrong. Like, it, it'll be strong and the feel-bads will be hilarious. But the thing here is this card, uh, like, yeah, like, I, I, I don't, I, I think it's still really, like, good, but... It's just there as you having another way to, like, shut off, like, people's draw steps and benefit off a wheel, right? It's just an additional way to do that. And, you know, I, I, I'm i personally okay with that. I don't think there's much of a problem with that because if you load your deck up with these things, too, like, you're going to have, like, hull breachers when you need a sweeper or, or something better. So 
I don't know. I, I, I've definitely played these wheel decks, and when you, like, you know, like, sometimes you just draw a lot of these effects, and it doesn't feel great, because it doesn't do anything other than draw aggro, like Richard had mentioned. <laughs> And you're just like, okay, uh, I don't have a wheel, so I'm not going to play any of the cards in my hand. I I definitely do think he'll get killed, uh, or attacked at least, if you play this card. So I think that, that point is very true, Richard. Uh, we see that with Notion Thief. Like, Notion Thief is maybe the card I'm most scared of in Commander, and if you play it, I'm I'm going to attack you, or going to try to kill the Notion Thief. So I do think this will paint a big target on your head. Oh, I, I seriously cannot wait. This Narset... <laughs> Notion oh, Thief opposition. I, I'm quitting Commander the deck Clash. Builds itself. <laughs> Krim already like <laughs> weasels his Dar- his uh, Notion Thief and uh, Darset <laughs> wheel into every deck possible. <laughs> now he gets another piece to work with. This is <laughs> and wrong uh, turn. And I, I feel this should be again. like forget land destruction. Watsi should stop denying card draw. I feel <laughs> that's like <laughs> no, not fun. Okay, how about this though? How have they not done one for ramp? Like, if an opponent would put lands in the play from, I don't know, additional lands or anything, like, you do it instead. That would be so, I, I, that would be amazing. I would love, to, I mean, of course, I might have a little bit of a, a bias towards green and their ramping, but the thing here is, yeah, it, it, it make it blue. <laughs> make it blue. Make it blue. I still feel it won't be that good because, like, what are the odds you have in your opening hand? <laughs> right, like everyone's, everyone's gonna ramp, and then you're gonna you're gonna get this later. <laughs> so you're like, oh, this is okay. So so we printed an uncommon. We printed an uncommon. All right, cool. you, you need like a once upon a time effect or something to like fetch it out. I, I, I just I just want to know that it exists, Richard. That's all. I just want to <laughs> know that it exists. Okay, next we have Sakashima of a thousand faces. Three in a blue, legendary creature, human rogue, mythic, it's a 3-1. You may have Sakashima enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except uh, it has Sakashima of a thousand faces as other abilities. The legend rule doesn't apply to permanents you control, partner. I think this, okay, first off, art-wise, this card is so sweet. I, I, I there is a, a, like, I, there is a miss on this card, and the same issue I had with the other Sakashima. Why doesn't this make it a rogue? I think it would have been cool if they tacked on like, and it's also a rogue. But of course, I'm biased on that too. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the whole the legend rule doesn't apply. Uh, I think that that I mean, now you could play like tons and tons and tons of like clone effects and stuff like that. So uh, like and like, you know, not have to worry. I mean, I'm sure if they remove the Sakashima, then, you know, your whole legend party blows up. But, the thing <laughs> <laughs> But minor details, right? But minor details. For the meantime, the party's going wild, and it is awesome. You get to, like, clone all these legendaries and, and seriously just run wild with all the legend uh, rule stuff. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the best clone commander for sure. We've seen yeah. people play, like, clone tribal on Commander Clash, and a lot of times you play the original Sakusima, and it's fine, but this is so much better thanks to that legend rule text, yeah. which makes it way, way more powerful, because as you said, now you can copy legends. You, it's cool as a partner commander, because it does have partner, so you can use Sakushima to copy your other partner if you want to, which is kind of like a fun but not super busted synergy. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, I think it's just a good a good card in general. I think the other thing I like about it being a partner and... We haven't got to, like, the meta section yet, but I've kind of, like, warmed up to how they did partners this time around. But it gives you a possibility of being a clone-style deck, but going into whatever color you want to, which before you're kind of, like, mono-blue. But there's some good, like, Simic clones, for example, that I've always been like, oh, man, I wish I could play this in my clone deck, but you just can't because of color identity rules. Thanks to Shakashima and being a partner, now you can play, like, Simic clones or whatever color combination, which I think is uh, is pretty fun. Like, I I don't think his card's super busted or anything, but it does seem like a fun legend to build a deck around. Would it be too broken if it could copy any creature on the battlefield? <sighs> probably not. I think it would probably be fine. Like, Clever Impersonator, it's not a commander, but it copies any permanent for right. four mana. So I feel like they probably could have let it copy anyone's creatures. Yeah, I, I thought that would have been like, that would have made it like actually super duper 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 sweet. Uh, if you could copy any creature, I, I mean, I don't know about permanent. That that's fine if they wanted to, but like, I don't, I, I don't know how if I would even consider it broken if it copied the permanent. So I, I, I don't know. Other than that, though, I think that this card is super duper cool. Uh, pro- and like you had mentioned, like a clone deck 
Oh, that that was like one of the biggest things, right? Like you would have like a ton of legendary stuff and you couldn't copy any more of it. So your your clones would just stay in hand. Well, thanks to Sagashima now, you can actually just keep going. So Yeah, so I mean, I that's definitely sweet. For a clone deck, you don't want Sakashima. Uh, it's like a weird thing. You want you want the static. You want the legend rule doesn't apply. But you typically don't want to copy your own creatures. Like if you actually look at cards in Magic, the ones that only copy your own creatures are cheaper than the ones that can copy anything. And because usually you want to copy other people's stuff, like that restriction is a big deal. So for a say general like just clone deck, that's probably bad because then you you have nothing to copy. But for a value commander, right? If your partner is something really good and you want a second copy of it, then Sakashima is amazing. Uh, like if you would play Cackling Counterpart in your deck, then you would probably play Sakashima. Uh, but in general, I think just like the universal clones, like Clever Impersonator, like normal clone are just a lot better because you can copy whatever scary threat your opponents have and that's your answer, right? They have a scary dragon, I have a scary dragon, it's fine. <laughs> Right. Whereas this one is like, it's a four mana three one and I copy, you know, nothing really. Right. So, mm. and I don't know, the, 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 the second rule is a little scary. Uh, if you copy your own permanence and, you know, ignore the ledge rule, someone blows up Sakashima, it's going to be sad times, uh, super <laughs> sad times. So I don't, I don't know if you, you really want to go there. So it's an interesting card. It's an interesting card, but I think you have to build around it somehow rather oh, than yeah. just slam it in a clone deck. Cause I, I don't think it, it's as good but, as a universal clone. But flavor-wise, it's perfect for a clone deck commander. Yeah, but your partner's going to be off flavor, Crib. What are you going to do about that? Um, <laughs> 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 Just wait. I already broke it. I, 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 I broke the format. It's going to be Jeweled Lotus, <laughs> Island, and then Rugrack and cop and then play this copy Rugrack or whatever his name is. <laughs> you should be able to play two Sakashimas as your both partners. That's what <laughs> that's what they should have done. <laughs> but is it just two zero ones with first strike menace trample just better? Strictly better. <laughs> You're setting up for the Akroma play. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up we have Jared Carthaline True Air. Carthalian? Carthaline. I don't know what his name is. Red, green, and a white. 3-3 three, three, legendary creature, human warrior. When Jared enters the battlefield, target opponent becomes the monarch. You can't become the monarch this turn. If damage would be dealt to Jared while you're the monarch, prevent that damage and put that many plus one plus one counters on it. I was about to read his name again, but I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> All I heard was Jared, so I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> numerous this, times this is such a sweet commander like this is this is such a cool commander for a monarchy deck for one thing like i know it's a little counterintuitive that you're making someone else a monarch but i assume i mean you're a naya you're probably aggressive you probably got creatures so even though you can't get the monarchy right away you should be able to steal it back quickly and then once you actually have the monarchy in jared then things get really sweet where you can do like uh oh what's that standard card grim that you made a video out of stormwild something no, stormwild caprador the, the, yes yeah the Stormwild Caprador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do all those shenanigans where you like have this, you're the monarch, you like blasphemous act and put 13 counters on it or whatever, and then start like one shotting people. So you can play like Earthquake Tribal, Blasphemous Act Tribal. Like this plus Starve Extinction makes it big enough to one shot anyone and you wrath the board. So I actually think, even though it's worded in a way that makes you think it's not a monarchy commander because you make someone else a monarch, I think it's actually really sweet commander for like a mass damage monarchy deck and i'm actually like really excited to build around jared i think and plus i just like i love the monarchy like i think that that is the best multiplayer mechanic they've ever made so i'm really excited to just have more commander games because of all these commander legends cards that are going to involve the crown on the table because pretty much every time the crown shows up i think it adds just like a really fun kind of mini game inside the bigger game of commander and we should be seeing it even more often because we got so many sweet new monarch cards yeah i'm ha i'm happy to see the return of more monarch stuff so uh like this as a commander to me just seems like I, I like the design of it. It's definitely interesting, uh, but just, like, not my kind of card that I would, like, build around. Um, but it is cool. I, I, I would love to see, like, what, like, that you would, like, build Jared and then have, like, the 
green and all the other uh, court cycle cards. I think that'd be pretty fun and a good amount of monarch stuff. So, uh, and like you had mentioned, you could also play like uh, blasphemous act and then just like you know randomly pump it out of nowhere. So that that is pretty cool. Yeah, I actually really like this card. I I don't think the first clause is a downside at all. Someone you give someone oh, yeah. a card, you get a favor from them for the future. Uh, yeah. And then if you want the monarch key, it's like super easy. You just attack the person with the crown. If they block, you know, if they have like a zero seven wall, you're screwed. But if they have like a big creature, they're, they're not going to block, right? They don't want to grow Jared. Uh, so you get the crown back uh, or you do cra crazy combo shenanigans like Blasphemous Act, uh, one shot people. I think this was actually a really strong commander. Uh, I'm really digging the art. It's giving me that uh uh oh what's what's his name kevin sorbo <laughs> the original hercules hercules <laughs> uh, oh yeah you, i don't know uh, am i dating myself watching hercules and xena and things <laughs> like that like this is this is what this card reminds me of like or, okay the other thing is uh you know those like really old like fantasy novels like <laughs> like, yeah. like uh yeah, that, that's giving me those vibes. So I'm, 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 I, I was gonna go with '80s and, like hair metal, but like <laughs> I, I was, I, I was thinking like, uh, like a the cover of a romance novel yeah, yeah, that like, yeah, Mark yeah. Simpson would read yes. or something like that. It reminds me of one of those those characters. We're, we're, we're trying to hit the female teen market with this here, uh, but yeah, I. I actually like this card, and I'm, I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the right flavor week. I'm gonna make a Hercules deck or something, and this is it. <laughs> it speaking of that, I mean, Kevin Sorbo. I randomly met him. Well, not randomly. It's expected, <gasps> but I, I met him at a Comic Con. <laughs> Wait, was he was he old or was he still Hercules? <laughs> I, I mean, it, it was. This was like three, four years ago. <laughs> so oh. I mean. He was chill. <laughs> he was a nice like like you do meet some people in real life and like you know you're worried about like meeting your idols or you know people that are up like you know like famous people but like yeah Kevin Sorbo was pretty chill. All right, I'm gonna buy a, a Jared and go to the next Comic Con and uh, <laughs> yeah, Kevin Sorbo <laughs> sign it. Try to get him to sign it. That's that's, that's the goal. Life goals. <laughs> Uh, all right, next up, we have Hamza, Guardian of a Ration, four green and a white. It's a 5-5 five, five legendary creature, Elephant Warrior. This spell costs one less for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. It's a giant, so it's good. a giant Elephant Warrior. Like, the art is very accurate. <laughs> I feel this like this card is like... Card. I feel like this card is really, really strong. Like, remember Animorphs and the shenanigans yep. you can do where you just, like, cast all these morph creatures for free? Yep. You kind of can do that in a maybe even more scary way. It's really easy in green-white to, like, make a few tokens, use one card to put a plus one, plus one counter on all of them, and then all of a sudden, with this on the battlefield... You're just playing like worm coils or Eldrazi for free. Like you're just like it's so absurd how strong this is. It's like a ramp spell. So I feel like this card is really powerful, and you know, always just play it fairly too. I think like it's a good unfair, like ridiculous ramp card where you just dump your hand of Eldrazi and just like a fine. I want to play my Conclave mentors and like do some fun little put counters on things. Although that maybe that's a bad plan because people are probably going to think you're going to be dumping like <laughs> Ulamogs and Emrakuls and stuff and try to kill you anyway once this hits the battlefield. But I think this is like a, maybe the strongest of the uncommon commanders. Uh, you know what? I I, I, I I agree with that. I think this is a probably the better uncommon commander, right? Like if not the best one. Uh, it, it, once again, like you had mentioned, there's a lot you can do here. You can cheat out some big creatures. Like, the, <laughs> you could go, like, Celestia, like, I don't know, artifacts and stuff like that, too, if you want. <laughs> artifact creatures, but, yeah. Like, it'd be cool to see, like, Blightsteel Colossus come down super cheap. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's kind of cool because that's, like, not your traditional artifact ramp colors. Like, usually artifact ramp is what, like, is it maybe mono blue? Like, somewhere in that range is where most of the artifact ramp is. So I think it's really cool that this opens up, like, a mirror battle sphere, Blightsteel Colossus style Selesnia deck, which is just something that normally you wouldn't play. That's not the color combination you would go to if you wanted to play those type of cards. And I think Hamza is, like, the perfect, perfect commander for that and going to be really powerful. Yeah, and I mean, just like, not even, you don't even need the full discount, right? Like, like example, for a Worm Coil, you don't need all six mana to be free. 
Like, if you, if I just get to play, I don't know, any, like, let's just say for this case, a Yasharn for a green and a white, heck yeah, right? Like, that's still good. Like, <laughs> I'm still okay with that discount. Uh, you guys are thinking small. I'm thinking Great Henge, Hamza, oh <laughs> play your whole Wild. deck of artifact <laughs> creatures. <laughs> Wild pair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wild pair. Might as well wild pair. Why not? Uh Nissa, the plant making one that puts plus one plus one counters. I feel this yeah. card uh can be abused in many, many ways. But I think great. I mean, it can Henge. still be used with Nissa, who shakes the world too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that mana. All your things are free. <laughs> but why not? Right? You can have more mana. <laughs> Uh, but Great Henge. I think Great Henge is crazy. Uh, Evolve decks. You could make it a Celestia Evolve deck. Um, yeah. And I think this is just really cool. You can make Elephant Tribal too if you want. <laughs> oh, there, yeah, yeah. There are there are enough elephants that you probably actually could. Yeah. But you could. Uh, do you want to? <laughs> probably. Richard will. I think <laughs> Richard, we have. I, I, someone will. has played Elephant Tribal and Commander Clash, either myself <laughs> or Tomer. They're not bad. They're like big creatures, unlike skeletons. <laughs> and you, you have hard counters to like little, my decks, right? You have a Loxodon Smiter, so that's just I, I thought, like... I thought you were going to say hard counters plus one plus one. <laughs> oh, yes, that too. You, you are a counter deck. <laughs> uh, all right, next up we have... AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait. Four green and a blue 5-5 five, five legendary creature Serpent. It's actually the face card of the uh, one of two pre-constructed decks. Uh, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. This is just like super Tati over, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it's feel like so they did sick. a good job. <laughs> they did a good job of not just invalidating old commanders in general in this set, and I was kind of surprised that the one time where a popular commander I feel like just kind of got invalidated, it was with the with the precon deck where this it's just like basically better Tayova, I think. Like, sure you pay one more mana, but the extra land drop makes up for it. You get a bigger body, and Tayova. I didn't realize it, but according to EDH Rec, that's the single most popular. Simic Commander and like all of Magic, so I think this is going to be incredibly popular. Like, well, the play life your cultivates game. and draw life game. Life <laughs> game. <laughs> who, who cares New about New players that? love their life game, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seth, please. <laughs> uh, but I think I think this card's busted and going to be very popular. Simic Commander. Oh, this is so Simic. It's just like <laughs> plays an additional land, draws cards. Oh my gosh. I, I, yeah, I don't know about that plays additional land parts. It's it's a little late at six mana, but Tatyova was an uncommon. This is a mythic. <laughs> so for one more mana, your mythic does a lot more. So I don't think that's too egregious. Uh, but, you know, it, it it's basically the prototypical Simic card nowadays, right? It makes all of your ramp turn into card advantage, <laughs> right? So you, you get to live the Simic dream. Uh, this card is really good. Like Tatyova... An uncommon, super played. Uh, now we have the mythic version, and I think the serpent will be played a lot as well. Uh, it is a it is a serpent though. I'm tempted to build serpent tribal with no synergies. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have too I, many serpents. Um, the other the other precon face commander is Wyleth, Soul of Steel, one red white two two legendary creature human warrior. Trample whenever Wyleth attacks. Draw a card for each aura and equipment attached to it. <laughs> so, wherever Tomer is right now. <laughs> Tomer just like felt somebody. It's almost like somebody talking about him. <laughs> this card <laughs> is such a, like, yeah, if you're into those kind of uh, like, you know, like kind of Voltron kind of style decks or whatever uh, or equipment decks, this just automatically goes in, right? It, it like Yeah. It, would you say this is better than Achille, though? Akiri, is it better Akiri. than Akiri? Yeah, Akiri. Um, so that that's kind of my question with this card. I feel like it's very powerful, but I'm actually not sure if I would want it as my commander over Akiri or if I would play it in the 99. I do think, like, if you're playing an Artifact or Auras decks that are in these colors, I think you want this in the 99 100% of the time. Like, I think it's yep. just really 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 strong so i think you want it in an akiri deck and i can't see an argument for playing it over akiri 
it is going to be very Voltron-y, though, and a little bit high risk. I guess the good news is we have good auras and equipments to protect creatures, so you can, like, try to build your deck to protect it, but I think I'm personally most excited to just, like, throw this in the 99 of various aura and equipment-based decks rather than playing it as my commander. Wait, isn't this just straight up better than Akiri? I'm, I'm a little confused. <laughs> Akiri I mean, gets I- you the indestructible, though, right? I think Akiri be... does offer some protection. Yeah, and wait, and it's a three three. What card are we talking about? The <laughs> the, the new the new Akiri Akiri Furious. Oh, Voyager. the new one. I was like, I thought you were yeah. talking about the old. I was like, what? <laughs> I was no, so I mean, it's, better, it's better than the old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the yeah. new Akiri is kind of similar, where it draws you cards, but it also can like protect your creatures. Although it is different though, because Akiri only hears about artifacts. So if you if you're playing like a Orzy style deck, I think it's definitely better than Akiri or some sort of mixed deck. But if you're just like straight up equipment, then I think I might go with Akiri Fearless Voyager instead. Yeah. All right. So those are all the individual cards we want to talk about. Uh, we want to save some time to talk about the set as a whole. Uh, we've seen the whole set. We first started off, uh, you know, with the hype up to Commander Legends. The leaks happened. Jeweled Lotus happened. Mana Drain happened. Uh, <laughs> how are you guys feeling about the set uh, now that we've seen uh, the entirety of the, of the set and the pre-cons? They're, it's amazing. I think this set's amazing. Um, they nailed it with a lot of cool designs for new cards, right? Like, example, it, it may seem not like much, but that simple, just example, that Hellkite Courser, being able to get your commander out of the command zone, interacting with it some more, uh, your own command zone, I think that's cool. Uh, Obika, uh, just an interesting Grixis card to end your own turn. Like, there's just some sweet designs here, right, for, like, uh, a lot of the newer cards that don't absolutely destroy commander, right? Like, they're say what you will about like maybe like jeweled lotus but like outside of that everything else has just been pretty sweet and very fun and perfectly captures the spirit of commander on a good amount of the cards like the apex devastator cascading a bajillion times right like it just looks good yeah i think heading into commander legend spoiler season i was afraid that it was going to be a set that was going to make many fewer cards playable in Commander. Like, that was was my worry, is they were just going to invalidate old cards, print busted stuff that was going to be auto-includes in decks, which knocks more old cards out of the format, really busted legends that are just strictly better than older legends, so the older legends won't really see play anymore. So that was my worry from the set. Now that we've seen the whole set, Wizards did a really good job of avoiding that. Like, yeah, I'm not super comfortable with Jude Lotus. There's a couple other cards, like the Red Dragon Wrong we turn. talked about. Like, I'm still a little <laughs> iffy on some of those cards. But in general, I think the exact opposite happened, where the new Legends and a lot of just the random new cards, they're going to make more cards playable in the format. Like, uh, Obeka is a really good example. You have Your Gen, lock. You have Your Lock. You have the Mana Burn thing, uh, which is... Like, those are all making cards that you would never play in any other card. Balby's another one that does that. So I feel like Wizards did exactly the opposite of what I was worried about and actually just kind of crushed it with this set. And even the partners, which was probably the thing I was most fearful of, I feel like the way they handled them with keeping them monocolored, uh, kind of, in general, powering them down a little bit, where it seems like when they did the original partners, they were just costed like a normal legend would be. These ones, it does feel like they kind of maybe added one extra mana to most of them as kind of like a punishment for for being a partner to make it a little more fair. So I think even with partners, Wizards kind of nailed it. So all around, outside of like Jeweled Lotus and maybe a really small number of other cards that bother me, uh, good reprints, something else we hadn't mentioned. Like, there's really yeah. nothing to complain about here. Like, they just kind of killed it. Yeah. Scroll Rack coming back, Mana Drain, uh, Richard's favorite card, Three Visits, like, stuff like that. Like, all of that now, I mean, like, Mana Drain is actually in the budget now for Commander Clash, so... <laughs> uh, <yeah>, that's, uh... <laughs> that's why I'm not looking... No, no. Uh, I think the set is really well done. I, I agree with Seth. I think uh, I think I was the most pessimistic going into the set. You know, it's the year of Commander. Uh, how are they going to break the format? I feel, okay, Jeweled Lotus, eh, that's only one card. I, I was thinking there's going to be a lot more Jeweled Lotuses happening. But overall, the set seems fine. Uh, there are a lot of new cards I'm excited to play with. Uh, nothing seems overtly broken. I don't think... 
Um, I, I think Wizards really nailed it in the sense that they went after the casual crowd and gave uh, us more cards to build around rather than trying to like power up our decks, so to speak. So I, I think they nailed it. Um, I don't know what this means for the next Commander Legends, uh, but for now, uh, it, it is good. And I, I like these cards, and I think they're, they will be a net positive to the format. But I still do have that concern that Seth has, where over time, the new cards will push out all the old cards, and then we have no place to play our old cards, which is kind of the appeal of Commander to me. Uh, but I think that's far off in the future. I think Wizards is trying their best, and they're aware of that. Uh, any other quick Commander Legends thoughts before we... Boy, we went longer on Commander Legends than I thought. I guess I take that question back. We're moving on to the next topic, or we're going to run out of time. Before we get to fish mail, really quick standard question for both of you. So, in the last week or two, we have seen the rise of Gruul Adventures. To Gruul Adventures, we had another uh, MPL weekend, or whatever they call it these days, 35-ish, I think, percent of the meta that matches up with what we have on the metagame page, where it's 35.9. How good is Gruul Adventures? Uh, is it a deck that we should be concerned about? Like, continuing to increase and be the next deck that's 50 or 70 percent of the meta? Or... Are we going to see a shift back towards other things? Is it defeatable? So uh, quick thoughts on Gruul Adventures in the state of standard. It's an aggro deck with a great late game, but I I, I don't think that it's like problematic. Only because it right now it feels like rock, paper, scissors, right? You have, uh, okay, Gruul gets popular, then Yorion, like Esper, Doom Foretold gets popular, and then if that gets popular, then Rogues get popular, and then if that gets popular, you have Rakdos, right? So it's like this cycle of just like standard decks that kind of just keep the meta changing every week. So though this week Gruul is like whatever X percent, maybe next week something else changes it, right? So it, it is still a very good deck. And probably like the safe build, especially when you have, as long as you have Embercleave, you know what I mean? Anything's possible. Um, so I, I, I think it's fine. I think the deck though itself is fine. And, and, and if we ban any more cards, that means we may as well just rotate out Eldrain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I would still be fine. Like I 100% not calling for a banning, but I would be fine with Embercleave being banned. Uh, it, uh, it is kind of like an annoying card. <laughs> so, but so I, ban Eldrain. <laughs> But I, well, I mean, we've already done most of it, so yeah. just finish, finish it off, finish it off. But really, I'm not super concerned about Gruul Adventures. Um, it doesn't feel oppressive to me to play against it. Like, when I play against Gruul Adventures, it doesn't feel like it felt when Omneth was around, or Oka was around, or any of those decks where you just, you're like, oh, I just, I know I can't beat this. Like, Gruul Adventures, you can interact with it with removal. It is, at its heart, an extremely fair, like, aggressive mid-range deck. So, I feel like it's a fine deck to be at the top of the format, and I don't mind playing against it, and I do think, as Kerm mentioned... It's more likely to start dropping back down in metagame percentage than continuing to increase because I do feel that it is very beatable. And if it is a huge percentage of the meta, then the decks that are good against it, like uh, Yarion, Doom for Told Shells or whatever, are going to start seeing more play and knock it back down. So oddly, we're, what, more than a month since uh, our last bannings and almost two months since the last set release. And Standard still feels like it's in a fairly healthy spot. It's not the Wild West of right after our last round of bannings where it felt like anything was possible, but I think we're actually in a pretty stable rock, paper, scissorsy style format where if one of the decks becomes super popular, something else is the foil to that and we'll rise up and take it down and then we keep shifting through those decks. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about where Standard is heading towards uh, Keldheim in a couple of months. I think we might just finally have fixed it. <laughs> Until they print something really broken again. Did we fix it? <laughs> Until we need to sell more it? packs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, let's hit a couple fish mail. We're going a little long, but Richard, guide us through some fish mail. All right. If you have questions, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag. Oh, I forgot. With the hashtag MTG Fish Mail. Oh, I blanked on a fish mail, guys. <laughs> yes. This is the first time in like 300 this, this episodes. Episode, that's, yeah, that's, that's I was going to say, this is like 302, happened. right? It, 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 the real reason was I was in the middle of reading a question uh, <laughs> for the next part. So I, I skipped ahead and like then I missed half my mana and fell over. So yeah, if you have questions, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail. And we'll get to your questions on air. 
Apollo Gods. I'm considering getting some Chalice of the Voice. However, I want to wait until Time Spiral Remastered for them to become possibly cheaper. What are your thoughts? Is it worth waiting? Um, uh, I would sure. I, I would say yes. Yeah. I mean, we're just not that far away from uh, getting Time Spiral Remastered now. I think it's like February or something. So you only got a little, a little while to wait. There's not a ton of paper magic going on right now anyway. So if you desperately, like, like if your LDS is open and you got a place to play them and you really want to play a Chalice deck, go for it. Otherwise, I do think you uh, will save money by waiting, most likely. All right. Uh, Gus TH98, Commander Legends has helped me see how Watsi has mismanaged magic. Could you imagine... Uh, if resources was put in to code four-person games on Arena, a uh, historic brawl would be a real format in that no matter, in that know how you guys think and other Commander Clash CC would react. Okay, what do you guys think? <laughs> Commander Legends, <laughs> insanely popular. Commander, insanely popular. How long before Arena gets four players and how long before Arena supports Commander? Arena uh, needs to be able to handle two players right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, once... Uh, that's That's got to be down the line. That's got to be way down the line. I like, don't think it'll ever happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Like, the, be- the best information we have from Wizards is that multiplayer is not something that will come to arena but there's a possibility that maybe there's a standalone multiplayer client or some other like digital way to play commander other than magic online that could happen in the future so my hopes are not very high that we're ever playing four players uh on magic arena oh i I think this is what we were talking about like four years ago where we're like Look how great Hearthstone is. Where's Magic's equivalent? What are they doing, right? Uh, like, if Commander is your best-selling product and it's the thing everyone wants to play, why can't we play it digitally? I feel Wizards will turn around on that. Now, maybe it's already too late for Arena, but I think it would be uh, insane for them to not cash in on this somehow on digital. Like, if the most popular thing is Commander, why are we focusing on Standard? Right. Like, so I feel wizards will start doing something about this. Uh, and hopefully that answer is not Modo and it's actually like arena for uh, commander to kind of cash in on this commander hype. Right. Like, so I can play with all of my friends online and, you know, I can play with them around the world now. They don't have to be in the same uh, vicinity as me. So I, I feel they're, they're going to find some way to, to do this. Like they, they must. The opportunity is too big for them to to let up. I feel like, so let me ask you one more question. Let's say they could magically have Commander, quote unquote, on Arena tomorrow. Do you think anyone would actually, or many people would actually play that format considering the card pool? Or is having Commander on Arena, does that mean finding a way to play four player games and adding 25 years worth of cards? I see that that's that's the thing like a lot of commander is also you finding these like really really random old cards and whatnot and trying to squeeze that into your deck so that is a huge part of like what makes commander fun um so like having only let's just say arena's card pool I don't think it's enough but I guess it's better than nothing however like yeah like I I I would love to see all 25 years of cards added but if we're talking about something like that that's seriously going to be so far down the line, if it is even anywhere on the roadmap. I think Historic Brawl would be enough. I think the fun of Commander is not the card pool, but rather the four-player aspect of it. It like basically covers up skill. It's like a political game now. It's casual. If you don't have the best deck, it's fine because the three people with the terrible Kithkin skeleton tribal deck can gang up on the you know tier one combo player and try to take them out. So that politicking, the the fact that you're hanging out and having fun together is very different than standard where I need to murder my opponent and acquire, you know, ranks, right? Uh, here, <laughs> yeah. you're like, if I suck, it's fine. Like you can't even tell in a four player game, right? Like uh, it's not as obvious if your deck is not as good or if you as a player is uh, are not as good. So I think the four-player aspect of it is really fun. And I'm actually curious for like the longtime Magic players who played uh, basically as kids and stuff like that when it first came out. Did they play one-on-one or more multiplayer before Commander even existed? Like four-player standard. 
Because uh, I don't, as a kid, that's all I played. I played like eight people games, six people games. Uh, I never played one v one. That was a very rare thing. That was when we couldn't, you know, assemble the crew together. Yeah, I, I often played multiplayer games uh, while also have. I had a pretty good even split actually. One one v one, but also when I had all my friends together at lunch, we would all just play a multiplayer game. Yeah. Uh. So. So yeah. I. I think Commander Arena coming soon. <laughs> Some. Someone. How long do you think? Two years? Three years? Never. F- five years. Oh, five maybe. years is too late. I... Magic is over by then. <laughs> <laughs> well then, uh... I I'm expecting I'm expecting a standalone game, and I'm expecting people to freak out because they're like, "Do you really expect us to have a Moto collection to play Eternal Formats, an Arena collection to play Standard, and whatever this new Commander client is to play Commander?" So, but that would be my guess is it won't be added to Arena, but we will have a way to outside of Moto to play digitally in the next few years. Yeah, I, I look forward to. I hope so. More gold and gems <laughs> on the new. <laughs> uh, on the I, new I want client. to be wrong about this, so. Uh, but yeah, like Richard and you both mentioned, I don't know how I'd feel about having to grind all the gems, the dailies, and all of that all over again to get these cards. Yep. All right. Uh, that's all the time we have for Fish Mill this week. Thank you to everyone who sent them in. If you have questions, send them to at Goldfish with the hashtag MTGFishMail, and we'll get to your questions on air. And I believe that brings us to the end of episode 302 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. So Richard and Greb, Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks to Spikes Academy for supporting the show. And we will be back next week to talk about whatever goes down in the world of magic. So until then, have a wonderful week, everyone. And this is the crew signing out. Bye.